Okay, now that we have the shocks off the vehicle, first thing we're going to do is release the nitrogen pressure. And I'm going to do that uh, using one of these, uh, these small screwdrivers here with a small tip. We're going to release the nitrogen pressure, and then from there we're going to uh, we're going to drain the oil out. Make sure you have a nice clean can, and uh, make sure you have your eye protection on because obviously you don't want to get this stuff into your eye. And it's good to have uh, some shop rags handy because this does get a little bit messy. Once we get all the nitrogen and the oil out of the shocks, from there we can start to uh, disassemble them so that we can rebuild them and potentially revalve them. Looks like it's going to uh, let some oil out. I'm doing this, so I'm just going to keep this rag here, just so I can catch some, catch some of this oil here. Okay, so I hope you can see that. Just want to do this nice and slow. Okay, it looks like it's going down there now. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, just try and push most of this oil out. Just pushing the shock against my body there. Okay, that's good. Um, feels like I've got all the nitrogen pressure out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my uh, get a socket on here. I'm going to take this uh, this valve right out, and then from there we can get the remainder of the oil out. All right, you're going to want to get a 916 socket. Yeah, just get this off carefully here. Oh, it's not good. Okay, and we'll just cycle the uh, the shock through. Get the oil out. Okay, that's uh, that's looking pretty good. Feel good. We got all the oil out. So now we're going to move on to uh, disassembling the shock itself. Now, in order to hold the shock in the vise, I went ahead and I made. Um, this holder here so you see what I've done is I've, I've bored out the exact size for my shock and then I've cut it in half that way then when I clamp down on it uh, I'm not going to damage uh, the body of the shock with the sharp teeth of the vise and the soft aluminum uh, shouldn't mark my shock that way there I'm going to be able to clamp it into my vise get a nice secure fit uh, without damaging my shock. If you don't have aluminum, uh, you could probably make one of these out of wood. Just uh, bore out the center to the correct diameter and then cut it in half and that will make a real nice mount for you so that when you go over and put it in the vise, you're not going to mark up your shock body uh, or, or even damage it. Now you notice on the top of your shock there's these uh, semi-circular notches into the top of this uh, collar at the top we'll call it. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've made this tool for myself uh, that just has a little uh, semi-circular notch that's going to fit in there real nice. And that way there I can, I can lock in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it and that way there it's, uh, it's going to help me be able to pop that thing off. I'm going to go ahead and show you how this works. So just Oh. Ah. 
there we go. Got it loose. There we are. So it just pops on there. Like it's uh, it's it's not screwed on. It's just a real uh, snug press fit in there. But um, yeah, I find if you just if you can twist it off like that with uh, some kind of a tool, you'll be able to uh, just kind of pop that right out of there. That's going to be a bit difficult for me to show you this, but you can see you can see the seal here and there's a, a metal collar as part of the the seal what you need to do is to tap that seal and that metal collar down just a little bit uh, to expose um, a lock clip that's underneath there Okay, that's uh, that's all it takes, and now we can get in there and get that lock collar out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try and get it out with one of these small screwdrivers again. I'm hoping I can uh, pick that thing out of there. Just gonna give myself a little bit extra light. There we are. I was able to pop it out right where it joins together. All right, you can see here it's just a uh, it's just a small clip. I'm gonna ease that out. Okay, uh, there we go, we got the clip out. And from here, we can um, completely remove the uh, the inner part of the shock. I'm gonna get some rags, because I'm sure this is gonna drip some oil. Let's go ahead and see what we have here. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. And there you have it. We've uh, successfully disassembled our Fox uh, 2.0 air shock. Okay, so here's a, uh, a more detailed look at the, uh, the internal shaft of the shock. Um, and I plan on revalving this. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've loosened up this, this, uh, this lock nut at the end. So I'm going to pull that off. And we're going to uh, watch the pieces as they come off so that we know how to uh, reassemble it properly. And then we can get a, a good look of how these Fox shocks are actually made. So let me just, uh, okay, so we have the top locking nut. Okay, we've got uh, two washers. Okay, and this is going to be the, the shim stack. And I'm going to be real careful here to make sure they all come off in the correct order. Okay, so you can see all these these tiny flat washers in there, and that's the the shim stack that is your valving. So it's kind of hard to kind of hard to see, but you can see there's a a bunch of tiny washers in there. That's going to make your shim stack. So I'm just going to carefully set that, and we'll flip it over. Okay, so there's a large retaining washer and then the uh, the bottom shim stack okay so I'm just being real careful not to mix these up right now and I'm going to assume orientation is very important so this one was at the top okay And that's it, pretty much. So you've got your uh, basically your bump stop spring, and then up at the top here, that's going to be your your seals, which we'll take apart also.